Hi, I'm Aidan Rodley and this is Mainland Matters as we uh, put the spotlight on racing in the south, but not only in the south this week, we're going to get you off to Sydney and our first video, I'm going to bring this straight in because we're going to claim uh, the win in the Group 1 Queen of the Turf Stakes from this horse who's back in the trail, three back the fence, uh, peels away into the straight. That is a tissue who, while beginning her career out of Cambridge's uh, Stephen Marsh's uh, stable there, uh, it was undoubtedly a South Island horse for a period. Uh, was trained from Stephen's record and base, being able to pick up some big wins there before heading over to Australia. She cleared out from them in the Queen of the Turf Stakes these days with Chris Waller, and that is a dominant win in a Group One company for a, a really talented uh, Billy now Mayor out of the South. And uh, earlier today, we caught up with Stephen Marsh to get his reaction. She's a, a wonderful filly, um, and it was great to see her get her Group One. She's been a, she's been a great racehorse, and yeah, no, it was uh, it was a really good thrill to see her tick that Group One box. It's so fantastic to see a tissue getting that success in Sydney. Big re week for uh, South Island racing as well with uh, Ashburton midweek, and then of course the two-day Easter meeting from Riverton. So three meetings in the South to look over. We've kept the focus more recent into uh, Riverton here on Mainland Matters. The first one we want to have a look at is the listed race from the week, and uh, this one, the Carriers Arms Hotel Riverton Cup, again for the Carriers Arms team. Such a brave performance in the in the green stripes there from Kilowatt who. For most of the way down the straight, looked as though he was going to be picking this up, but coming through one off the fence, that's as a thought, in the hands of Corey Campbell, uh, closed in the quickest last, 8, 6 and 200 of the race, for a really strong win, just diving at Killawad in the closing stages to get this victory, uh, prepared in the south by Lisa Vaughan, and uh, a really tenacious performance to take out the Riverton Cup. What an effort from Killawad, he just keeps on running those good races, and uh, he will appear very shortly as well as we go through some of those weekend replays. But first, I want to take you to the other uh, key race from Saturday's meeting and uh, have a look at Inflame. Now, we'd, we'd spoken about her and what she was capable of. She comes through here, one off the fence, again in the hands of Corey Campbell. And this is a really strong win from a good staying three-year-old filly prospect. She'll now head uh, to the listed War Step Stakes on Saturday week at Rickett and Brian Anderson, when I spoke to him this morning, said he's really happy with the way she's come through it. She's a good doing filly, uh, but she's come through this win, which was really soft on the line too, under Corey Campbell, in uh, pretty good style. So she'll be hard to beat in that war step stakes, which we'll also uh, touch on shortly too. OK, to Monday's meetings out of uh, Riverton, and we have a look here again. Here he is, uh, Kilowatt, up three wide on the speed, and... Uh, after running such a game second in the Riverton Cup, runs a really good third in the high waist stakes on this occasion. But it's the Tui Toiler under Goss and Jagu, uh, getting a really good win for trainer Stephen Blair Eddy. Uh, through on the inside, the Growler runs a terrific race, and uh, Kilowatt holds off Sam Beasy Zipper in for that third money. But a really nice win from the Tui Toiler that was in the high waist stakes, the rating 88 feature on the second day. And uh, also on that second day, let's have a look at the win of Zoolander, who's just peeling four wide into the straight under Kavish Chowdhury, even five wide. Uh, gets down centre track and runs down Eminon, who did a very good job. Uh, she'd run really well in the Franklin Stakes the first day and uh, kicks on strongly for a good second. But Zoolander, a uh, really sustained, tenacious burst down the outside. And it was a really a, a, a reawakening of the Pittman team, who, who might have just had a quieter season than normal, but three wins on the program, and Zoolander just about the pick of those with uh, such a good performance. I want to have a look at this run. This is a horse of real quality. You won't even be able to see her here. She's way back. There she is, coming full wide into the race. Look how far away from the leaders she is. That is, she's a con. Uh, comes into it, into this race, uh, now uh, into the straight, and still has a power of work to do. I was able to pick them up uh, at this point uh, in really good style, but uh, this is some sort of win from a filly who probably now heads to the Worstead Stakes on Saturday week, but doesn't this run have Queensland Oaks written all over it? Of course, we saw uh, Kelvin and Amy Tyler have horses campaign in Queensland last year, even if they go with one. Uh, she looks to have that sort of quality over the 2,200 metres at Group 1 level in Brisbane. Say so bring it on, but uh, let's see what she does in the War Step Stakes first. She runs all the quickest closing sectionals and a very, very good win 
for that Shiza Khan one to uh, follow through as well. Okay, we'll just uh, leave the Ashburton's meeting on Wednesday. A lot of that form will come up in the, in the next few weeks as well. But let's turn our attention to this week. And of course, a start of a really big time of racing. Lots of stakes races coming up in the uh, Christchurch area. First of all, the, the two stakes races this weekend. The Avon City Ford Easter Cup at listed level. A uh, really nice field. Top rated there as the time's ticking. Perfect scenario comes in for Mark Walker. This is what he had to say. He's had a pretty good season for him, the old boy. Um, he's in, probably in career best form. Um, he's running some really good races. Uh, just sort of got a bit too far back last time at Tauranga, but um, was really strong through the line. So, look, he should be competitive this weekend. And he gets back down south where he just loves it down there, doesn't he? Yeah, for sure. He's, like I said, he's a, he's a good old honest horse. He always puts in. So, look, we're expecting a real competitive run from him. OK, yeah, uh, Easter Cup had a condition soup for him this time around. Yeah, look, obviously he's quite high up in the handicap, so we have to carry a bit of weight. But um, in saying that, it does look a winnable race. So perfect scenario, already a winner of the Group 3 White Robe Lodge this season, gets back down south where he's got such a good record. Also in the race from the Stephen Marsh barn is Divine Sabah off the minimum. In her form leading into that, um, two, two very strong wins was great. Uh, she didn't get all favours last time, but she's come through that well. She's going super um, and look, gets in on the minimum and uh, she's flying. So yep, it just to be nice to be able to add to her black type tally. Yeah, she trained on. To your satisfaction out of that race? Trained on really good. She galloped on the grass yesterday and um, she's going super. She seems to really love Rickon and some of the performances there have been first class this preparation. Yeah, they have and even last preparation when we took her down there she got black type um, as a three-year-old but um, you know she's going really good up here but just uh, just things weren't go quite going right. Tracks were a little bit against her so we decided to send her down to the Rickon and Stable. We've had a lot of luck in uh, black type with the mares down there and, and she's just another one. What's in store to her for her? Could, could she step up to 2,000 metres the following week, or what are you thinking? She potentially could, yeah, and, and, and run in the cup for sure. Um, you know, she's tough, she's savable, she, uh, a backup certainly wouldn't be uh, off the cards, but um, yeah, she's, she's loving it down there. You're happy with the way she's going there? Very happy and looks terrific. Has to be a lightweight chance too, Divine Sava. And the other stakes race on the program is the listed NZB Air Freight Stakes uh, with a really nice field coming together here, including Luella Christina out of Stephen Marsh's barn. Comes out of a, a Group 1 Levin Classic placing last time out. It's pretty good form. She's a beautifully bred filly. Um, you know, group 1 place now. We just want to tick the box of a, of a stakes winner. She does look well placed here. Um, she, she's uh, been sent straight to... Our record and stable after the Group 1, uh, she's had plenty of time to settle in, galloping uh, really nice. She looks a picture of health and look, she's a fully that could even potentially back up in the, in the last day uh, over 2,000 metres. Yeah, she's come through Trentham to your satisfaction? Yeah, really good. We've been able to give her a, she had a, a few quiet days um, in Otaki um, and she's uh, headed down. She has plenty of time to settle in and yeah, settled in terrific. What's the word from, from Lisa about how she's trained for this one? Yeah, terrific. Uh, they're thrilled with her work. Um, uh, she just she looks great. They've been sending photos through, and um, you know she's really thrived. You know, it's just a nice little stable down there, and um, you know change of scenery uh, sparks them up a little bit, and yeah, she's certainly taken to it well. So Stephen Marsh two-handed into that race, as he said, and uh, Mark Walker with three family ties, Miss Dunsford, and uh, also El Manette, who ran a very good second at Ashburton last week. Yeah, let's talk Miss Dunsford because uh, she's been really attacking the line in its recent runs. Has she trained on? Yeah, really good. Um, Andy Carson's been looking after her for us down there, and um, yeah, he's really happy with her. Um, she's been running some really consistent races, so hopefully again we can sneak some black type. Okay, 1,600 metres, how's that suit this weekend? Yeah, it's so, sort of maybe a bit of a query, but um, look, we'll see how we go. We've got to have a throw at the dice. The black type's obviously the goal with the filly like that. Okay, and what about El Manette, uh, first run in the south uh, last time? How, how, uh, how did you assess it? Yeah, look, obviously she was really short in the market, and um, we thought she, we thought she'd be, you know, a good chance of winning. But the filly that beat her was was really strong. And look, obviously it looks hard to reverse that on the runs. But um, look, she's trained on rail, and the team's really happy with her. Okay, so that's a look at our two feature races from Rickerton this weekend. Really good racing as part of a, a terrific autumn carnival about to kick off there in Christchurch. So that's mainly matters this week. We'll catch you again next week. I'm blowing up like you thought I would. I'm blowing up like you thought I would. And if you don't know, I'm blowing up. I'm blowing up like you thought I would. I'm blowing up like you thought I would. And if you don't know, I'm blowing up like you thought I would. I'm blowing up like you thought I would. And if you don't know, I'm blowing up like you thought I would. 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 I'm blowing up like you thought I would.